Today, we're gonna take a look at how to do advanced editing in Final Cut Pro X, so stick around. Hey, what's up guys, this is Marcos, and this channel is all about helping you create better video so you can build your brand. So if you're new to this channel, subscribe right now so you don't miss a thing. All right, so before we get started, if you haven't already watched my Learn Final Cut Pro X in 13 minutes, watch that video first because it will give you an introduction into using Final Cut Pro X. So that's for beginners. Once you watch that, come back to this video uh, because I'm gonna go over some very advanced uh, editing features in Final Cut Pro X. So without further ado, let's jump over to a computer and let's get started. Here we are in my desktop and this is my external hard drive i would highly recommend that you always save your video footage and your audio to an external hard drive don't store on your computer otherwise it's going to slow it down all right so here's a bunch of folders these are videos that i've worked on in the past these are all my youtube videos i always start by creating a new folder whenever i'm working on a project so the important thing about advanced editing is having a workflow so this is my workflow. I create folder for each project. So let's take a look at one of these, like this jump cuts. Um, let's say I just imported all my video footage and my audio foot, uh, audio recordings here. Uh, I'm gonna be creating a, a new project out of this footage. All right, so I start by importing and then I have to keep track of which audio corresponds to which video clip. So. Z007 corresponds to Zoom 001. Uh, that's very important to, to be aware of that because we're gonna be syncing this audio with the video. So let's start by opening up Final Cut Pro X. Let's maximize this. All right, so by default, it, Final Cut Pro X will open the last project we worked on, but we wanna close everything. Otherwise, our computer will slow down since it's trying to uh, manage uh, multiple projects. So we want to close it, close this down. This is our last project. File, close, library, DIY, quick release. You want to have it like this whenever you're starting a new project. You don't want to have anything open. So go to file, new. Actually, I'm going to skip over this because you probably already know how to do all of this. All right, so command I to import footage. You'll notice that I did not create optimized media. I think my computer handles 4k footage just fine without creating optimized media so let's sync the audio z007 corresponds to zoom 001 you hold down the command button or key and you tap it right click synchronize clips and you want to use the audio for synchronization click ok and let's drag this over to our timeline and i'm going to change the view of this because uh, i want to see the audio you can do something like that or like this. Uh, so first of all, we have to turn off the audio coming off the camera, otherwise it's gonna sound uh, bad. So if we uncheck storyline, that's how you know it turns off the audio from the camera and you only keep the connected, which is the Zoom H1, which is what we want. All right, so to close down Windows, you wanna do this as much as you can because you will have more space to work with. Let's close down the library, Control Command 1, Command Four to close the inspector, command four to open it up again. And then command five is for the uh, the video and audio effects like transitions and that. And sometimes it's better to just have it close until you need it. Command five to close that. All right, uh, so let's see here. There's a bunch of dead space here. This is where I begin talking. So one of the things you need to learn about is keyboard shortcuts. Try to use them as much as you can. So uh, we don't have to use our mouse. So try to keep this mouse up here because if if you have your mouse up he down here, it might interfere with the keyboard shortcuts. So keep it up here. So to go to the beginning of this video, hit the up arrow key. And now to fast forward, hold down the shift and the right arrow key and it'll fast forward to the right. Now to move one frame at a time, just hit the right arrow key. I wanna bring the video clip over to the right so hold down the option and left bracket key and it moves everything to the right. Now let's say I wanna make a cut, um, that will let me move forward in this timeline and I wanna make a cut here because there's desk space. So instead of hitting the, or grabbing your blade tool, just hit command B, it makes a cut there. Now to fast forward, shift right arrow key or shift left arrow key to fast forward to the left. Now let's drag the clip again to the left or 
to the right, actually. Option, left bracket key. And you can do the same thing. Let, let's say I'm going to do fast forward. I'm going to make a cut here. Command B or hold on, Command Z to undo whenever you mess up shift. All right. Let's me, let me make a cut here. Command B. And then I'm going to move to the left shift. Right. There we go. And I'm going to bring the, the clip to the left. So option right bracket key. It brings everything to the left. So that's how it works. Uh, if you want to zoom in, command plus, command minus, to command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. Uh, you can also use, uh, let's see, if I'm really zoomed in here and I want to do a fast zoom out, shift C, and it'll bring all the timeline into view. Now that we have that, let's move on to color grading. To color grade faster, I like to use an adjustment layer and I'll link to a video where you can get an adjustment layer. So control command one to open our library. And here's uh, the a custom adjustment layer. You can drag this over and we're gonna be applying the color grade to all of our footage um, using this adjustment layer. All right, command six to open up the colors wheels. There it is. Control command one to open to close that down. The other thing down command seven is to open up the scopes, which I use a lot. Now I'm not going to go over color grading. That's a whole different topic and I can spend, you know, 20 minutes, just explain it. So I'll link to other videos, check out these videos here. And also I'll leave some links in the description so you can check out how to color grade. So basically the idea is uh, to add some color grade here to add more contrast the highlights I can add saturation there and our image is already looking better so you can uncheck this to see the difference I shot this in s log 2 which is a flat picture profile uh, so you know you just have to do some tweaking to it to get the colors out all right so come in, command 7 to open up scopes you can also change the view to the vector scope uh, and different waveforms, the histogram and all. I don't use the histogram that much. I use a waveform and the vector scope. Again, check out the videos on how to color grade. And you can also, what you do is, let's say I'm using this setup often and I'm using the same lights, same settings on my camera. I can save the effects preset. That way, uh, whenever I come back to edit something to color grade, I can just select this preset and it'll automatically color grade for me. So I already have some here, a uh, folder, which I use often whenever I'm do using the setup because I save time with the color grading. So think about that whenever you're, you're shooting anything, try to use the same settings and have the, re the same repeatable workflow. That way it speeds up your editing process. Lastly, I just want to go over some very helpful keyboard shortcuts which are going to help you save time again let me close the scopes and let me close the inspector so to add a title is Control t whenever you're editing editing a title make sure your playhead is over your title command 4 again to open it i am always opening and closing the inspector and all those windows and you go here to change the text you probably already know that and you can also make a copy of this title by selecting it holding down the option key and dragging it over. Sometimes you need to create multiple titles. That makes it easier to create copies of the same title. To add a transition between two clips like I have here, make sure that this is selected. Command T to add the default transition. If we zoom in here, you can see we can drag this, make it shorter, make it longer. That's up to us to decide. Um, also, whenever, let's say, I'm doing keyframing like this, how this title, let's say I wanted to slide it in, um, you go up arrow key to go to the beginning and we're going to add some keyframes here. You can add it to the X axis. So we add a keyframe there and let's move it out of place. There we go. Now let's move forward like 10 frames. Shift right arrow key. Hold on. Shift, shift arrow right arrow key. We move 10 frames. And then uh, let's now add another keyframe and and let's go to the center by hitting the zero enter. So if we play this, it moves. You see that. And if you want to change the keyframing, you can do Control V. Select uh, the title clip, Control V, and it'll show us the 
the animation. So we can drag this keyframe to the to the left if we want it, if we want it to slide in much faster. So if you play it, you see that. Or if we want it to go really slow, you see that. So that's really neat to do that. Um, you can always say, oh, I don't like this uh, this title at all. I just want to get rid of it. You can just select the V button and it'll it'll uh, disable it because let's say you change your mind and you want to come back to it. So that's an option. I want to show you two more things before I end this video. One of them is how to crop in. So let's say I want to make a cut here. Again, let's not use our playhead. Let's move to the left, make a cut here, command B. And I want to zoom into this video on a scale in. We could go to the inspector and use the sliders over here. But personally, I like to use this here. And what I like to do is actually zoom out to maybe like 25%. And then I can just drag this over. And what I'm doing is zooming in or cropping the image, actually. Not actually cropping, but zooming in. And then I can reposition this wherever I want. I can zoom out if I needed to. I just flip the image. I don't want that. Um, and just reposition it and make sure that these uh, lines or that my video is not accidentally cropping the wrong way. Otherwise, we're going to have black bars. So that's why I like to zoom out just to make sure my whole video is taking over the, the space I have set. Okay, so that looks good. Click done. You can go back to fit. And there you go. I zoomed in from this to this. I zoomed in. That's pretty neat. Uh, the other thing you can do is create a freeze frame sometimes. Um, let's say you want to just freeze part of your screen. You can select it. Make sure your playhead is where you want it to be. Go to edit, add freeze frame. And here it just froze of, uh, this image. And you can extend this or make it shorter. It's up to you. So that's something that you, you might use once in a while. Uh, it's good to know about it. Uh, so those are the major things I use. And I like to keep it simple and fast. And those are, so those are the things. Whenever you can, try to learn the keyboard shortcuts. Like for the freeze frame is, you can see here, it's that's Shift F. I think that's Shift. Let me see. No, it's that means Option F. There it is. It's Option F. So whenever you can, like I said, have those in mind or write them somewhere so you can quickly refer to them and eventually they become a habit and you can edit much faster. All right, so those are the features I use most often. I know there's a bunch of other stuff, but this is the stuff that I find the most useful and that I use almost every time I sit down to edit. So please let me know if you have questions, any comments, anything you I wasn't clear about, please let me know down in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so because I'm making videos like this every week and you don't wanna miss them. As always, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.